Fluids 10. Could you elaborate on the conversion from head pressure in inches to uh, head pressure in feet? I'd like to know where you got the 2.31 feet per PSI. Well, I guess there's kind of two questions embedded in this. There's the conversion of, uh, of pressure from true, truly pressure units like PSI to length units. That's something that's unique to fluids that we talk about um, pressure as the height of a column of a fluid that would exert that amount of pressure. And um, in a previous office hours, I went through some uh, calculation to kind of show the derivation on that. And I'll, I'll come at that again today from a different approach because I think it's worth some repetition um, until this stuff is really ingrained in your head. Uh, but then the other part here is about going from inches to feet, which is really just as simple as it sounds. If you have the height of a column of water or air or mercury or whatever it is, and you're measuring it in, in length units, um, you can just go from inches to feet or, you know, whatever length units you want, meters, um, whatever the situation calls for. That's just straight up length conversion. So the really interesting bit is going from length units to pressure units and, and back. Um, converting length units is is hopefully as straightforward as it, it would seem. But let's talk about uh, going from pressure to length units. So we know that pressure equals rho GH. And unfortunately, that's um, only applicable for SI units. When we talk about US customer units, we actually have to say, nope, there's something missing from there and it's critical, which is dividing by G sub C to everyone's dismay. But hopefully most of us have accepted this by now. This All this does is account for going from pounds uh, force, which would normally be in the acceleration due to gravity to pounds mass. And the units of uh, G sub C are just what they need to be to make that happen. So what are these different parameters? Let's just make sure we're covering the definitions here. Rho is density, which is pounds mass per cubic foot. And um, we're gonna introduce this idea of gamma, gamma H, where gamma is specific weight. So it has the same magnitude as the density, but it has units of pound force per cubic foot. Most engineers will stop here. They will just say, uh, I'm gonna take the liberty of saying the specific weight for a given fluid is the same as the density, except I'm just gonna write pound force instead of pound mass. And if you wanna do the same, that is completely fine. You need not remember anything I'm about to say, but most folks find that uh, unsatisfying and wanna hear at least a little bit about the background to prove that taking that liberty is completely acceptable. So that's why I, kind of offer this up. So let's take ourselves through the computation of gamma. We're saying in SI units, gamma would be rho G, but in US units, gamma equals rho G over GC. So what is that? Well, for water, the density is taken as 62.4 pound mass per cubic foot at standard conditions. And the acceleration due to gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. And G sub C is 32.2 feet per second squared times pound mass over pound force. So we lose pound mass, we lose feet per second squared Oops, I wrote, no, that's right. Yep, so pound force over cubic feet, that's what we want. And the number is of course still 62.4, no change in the magnitude.
Okay, so then let's come back to pressure because all of this is just to sort of establish gamma as an idea that we can take and use. But what we're really interested in doing is going from pressure to length units. So we're gonna apply pressure equals gamma H to water. And just for the sake of conversation, let's let P equal one PSI. And we'll find H. What, in other words, what is the height of a column of water that exerts the pressure of one PSI? Well, we can solve for H. H equals pressure over gamma. And then the pressure would be one pound force per inch squared. And then I'm gonna to convert to feet. So 12 inches over one foot squared. And then we'll divide by the specific weight, which is 62.4 pound force per cubic foot. So we lose pound force. We're gonna lose inches squared. We're gonna make sure we square that number. And uh, it's gonna end up being 144 over 62.4, which is 2.31. And the units, this feet cubed comes up into the top and you have feet squared in the denominator. So it just has units of feet. And when you say this, you wanna make sure you say feet of water. You don't always have to write that. You know, if you're, if, it, if you're dealing with a problem that's about water and the, you know, you're saying that the head pressure is 2.31 feet, then that's perfectly fine um, as long as you know what you mean. <laughs> but if you're dealing with pumping oil or something that has a different specific gravity, then the height of a column of that fluid could be different, right? If you have a, a column of mercury, which has an incredibly high density, that's why we use it in thermometers because it's, uh, you know, able to be a compact device. Otherwise, if we used water, we might have to have a, a very tall apparatus just to measure small changes in pressure. And another thing that's helpful to know, uh, actually two more things I wanna mention related to this. One is that uh, it's good to know some common numbers just because it's handy. So think about one atmosphere since it comes up over and over again you probably know or will know at some point in your studying from doing it over and over that that's about 14.7 PSI. And by multiplying by this number, 2.31 feet per PSI, we can apply that straight away and say that the height of a column of water that has the same pressure as atmospheric pressure would be about 34 feet of water. And the other thing I was going to mention, I think the problem in question um, dealt with a column of air. And I may have, I didn't, I didn't specifically uh, go back and double check that problem. But one thing that comes up sometimes is if you have a, a column of air and you want to figure out how, uh, what the pressure would be in inches of water and you want to go, you're going from inches or feet of air to inches or feet of water you can just use the relative densities as a ratio. So like um, if I told you you had some amount, I'll just say X um, inches of air, then how would you find out, how would you convert that to Y inches of water? Well, you know, it's gonna be a lot less because water is way, way more dense than air, but how much less? We'll just take the standard density of air which is something like 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot over the standard density of water, which is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And whatever that comes out to be, whatever that ratio is, that's uh, you can just apply that to your inches of water column. You could do this even if it wasn't length units, right? If it was PSI, you could do the same sort of idea. Just compare the relative densities and that'll tell you um, how the pressure will be reflected.